Shalom. I hope you all are doing well. I am blessed and I'm back again with a video. Today, I want to talk about a topic that have always been interesting to me, and that is the origin of evil. In Christianity, we're taught that evil comes from Satan and the angels that fell with him. Now, while this is partially true, there's actually a more complex explanation, according to the Bible, as to where evil actually comes from. Now, a great deal of the information that I'm going to be sharing with you today is going to come from the book of Enoch. Now, I'm going to give you a little supporting information uh, historically before I get into, you know, the evil spirits and Satan's seed, etc., in ancient times, before Elohim repopulated the earth through the sons of Noah, angels were sent to the earth to be watchers over mankind, protecting and guiding them in the path of righteousness. But as time passed, these angels began to follow the teachings of Hashatan, or Satan, whom was the first fallen angel, and became corrupt and wicked just like him. The angels then begin to grow lustful of the beautiful black women of the earth and sought to have sexual relations with them so that they could produce their own children. This was the same sin, unlawful sex, that was committed in the Garden of Eden between Satan and Eve that caused Adam to fall. Despite Elohim's warning to the watchers about the consequences of altering his creation, the fallen ones rebelled against the Most High. They proceeded to have sex with the human women. As a result, the women that they had relations with bore their children and produced a genetically modified offspring. According to the Book of Enoch, the offspring of the fallen ones were three different types of people. The first group of people that came from the fallen angels were the great giants, a hybrid people who stood as tall as 450 feet high. They waged war against the indigenous men of the earth so that they could have the women all to themselves to produce their own kind. This can be found in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 through 4. The next group of people that came from the fallen angels was the Nephilim. The Nephilim were the offspring of the great giants, but they were not as tall as their ancestors, only standing about 6 to 12 feet high. The Nephilim were the giants who inhabited Canaan during the time of Moses that Yahuwah told the Israelites to kill and take over their land. That can be found in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33. They were also the Philistine warriors, which produced the seven-foot-tall Goliath, and this is the giant that King David killed. The last group of people that came from the angels were the Ilioid. Unlike the giants, the Ilioid were normal height people, very barbaric in nature, and were able to reproduce and bring forth their own kind. They were who modern-day science call the Neanderthals. I'm going to be reading from one of the books of Enoch, chapter 7, starting at verse 10. Then they took women, each choosing for himself whom they began to approach, and with whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incantations, or magical spells the dividing of roots and trees, and the women conceiving brought forth giants. And they bore to them three races first, the great giants. The giants brought forth the Nephilim, and the Nephilim brought forth the Elioids. And the Elioids are what we call the modern-day Neanderthals. At this point, you should be able to put two and two together. You should be able to conclude what nation of people today came from the Neanderthals, who are barbaric in nature and resemble these people? 
So as previously mentioned, the fallen angels had sexual relations with women on earth, producing their own offspring. These offspring begin to eat everything produced by humans. They also turned on the humans and began to devour them. It is then that the call goes up to Yahuwah to deliver humanity from the offspring of the fallen angels. The result of the call to heaven by the oppressed humans brings about the destruction of the physical giants by the archangels Raphael, Michael, Sariel, and Gabriel. The death of the giants is brought about by the flood event in Genesis, which at the same time cleanses the earth of the blood shed by the giants and also eliminates corrupt humanity. However, the hybrid spirits of the physical giants survive the flood and are identified in 1st Enoch and other early Hebrew texts as evil spirits or demons. The fathers of the giants, the watcher angels, are locked in a deep pit identified as Tartus and are bound there with chains and covered with rocks. And this is where the watchers will be held until the day of consummation or the day of judgment. The evil spirits that would now pervade the earthly realm and bring affliction and persecution upon humanity are identified in 1st Enoch chapter 15 verses 8 through 12 as the spirits of the giant offspring, the children of the sons of Elohim, and the daughters of humanity. I'm going to be reading 1st Enoch chapter 15 verses 8 through 12 and it reads, now the giants, who have been born of the Ruach, or the spirit, and of the flesh, shall be called upon the earth evil Ruach, or evil spirits. And on earth shall be their habitation. Evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh, because they were created from above. From the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall they be upon the earth, and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the Ruach, or spirit, of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of the terrestrial Ruach, or spirit, who are born on earth. The spirit of the giants are like Nephilim, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall content, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation, no food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty, they shall be concealed, and shall rise up against the sons of men, and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. Before we talk about what we just read, let's go back to the offspring of the Nephilim, in which were the Elioids, or what the scientists call in modern day terms, Neanderthals. As previously mentioned, the Neanderthals derive from the offspring of the Nephilim, the fallen angels who Yahuwah cast out of heaven in ancient times. This can be found in Genesis 6 and 4. And it reads, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of Elohim came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So those of you who don't believe the book of Enoch um, and only read the King James Bible or the English text, Genesis 6 and 4 is saying that there were giants in the earth at one point in time. There were the giants that came from the um, fallen angels, sexual escapades with the women on the earth, and then from the giants came the Nephilim, and from the Nephilim came the Elioids or Neanderthals. And unlike the giants, the Elioids or Neanderthals were normal height people. They were very barbaric in nature and um, were able to reproduce and bring forth their own kind. So the Neanderthals are the third type of race that derived from the sexual escapades between the fallen angels and humans, and they are the forefathers of all modern Europeans. 
in regards to them being pale skin um, and not brown skin like everyone else, this was because they are a genetic mutation. According to the scientists at the Max Planck Institute, the Neanderthals possessed a mutation in the melanocortin first receptor, which is located on chromosome one, and that this mutation caused them to carry phenomelanin or a light melanin in their skin. And so they carry pheomelanin in which is a different type of melanin than we carry. We carry the eomelanin, which is the brown melanin. Now, apparently the fallen angels uh, who were cast away from Elohim for having sexual escapades with the daughters of men, they and their children appeared to have leprosy. You know, they were pale skin, white skin, albinism, whatever you want to call it. They had um, no melanin. They weren't brown skin at all, like the indigenous people who were on the earth at that time. And this is why you see uh, many hieroglyphics on the walls of Egypt today um, from the ancient times depicting tall whites because there were white Nephilim. And I don't know if you guys know the story of when Noah was born, Lamech, his father was afraid of him because he was born albino. And Lamech said that his appearance was as the fallen ones, meaning the fallen ones must have had pale skin. Now, the evidence of all of this can be found in the Bible by tracing the lineage of Canaan near Egypt, who had many descendants end up being tall white giants as a result of having relations with the Nephilim. And of course, this is why Yahuwah commanded the children of Israel to go and kill all of the Canaanites because they were contaminated with the seed of the fallen angels. And Elohim didn't want the same to happen to the Israelites when they were to enter into the promised land. This can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. So if you read this, you'll find that the Israelites did not kill off all the Canaanites as you had commanded them to do. Therefore, the Nephilim descendants of Canaan were able to continue their mixing with the other nations, producing multiple offspring of Neanderthals. This can be found in Judges chapter 1, verse 17 through 36. So among the many nations that the Canaanites had relations with were the elder two sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog. As a result, the descendants of Gomer and Magog were Neanderthals. What's interesting is that the modern day Jews are Khazars, which are descendants of Magog, and this have been proven and confirmed by DNA. And so the white people who are calling themselves Jews are not descendants of Abraham at all and um, can scientifically be proven with DNA testing that all modern Europeans are from Neanderthals. Now, let me just add one more thing because we do call the Europeans Esau. So as time passed, many of Esau's descendants intermarried with Japheth's children, especially Gomer and Magog, and went on to form the nations of Greece, Rome, England, Turkey, Ashkenazi, Khazaria, Britain, Spain, Italy, France, America, etc. And so this is why the other nations have murdered the indigenous black peoples of the lands they conquered. They robbed them of their culture, took on their identity, and whitewashed their history. And the reason that many of us don't know this is because we don't take the time to study the Bible or research history. So when we take a look at Esau today, we see all this information have to be true. We see that his seed was spoiled, like Yahuwah said, and we see how Esau mixed his seed with the Nephilim and all the other nations. And so today we see Esau, a pale skin um, nation of people who still murder, rob, take on the identity of other cultures, um, whitewash history, 
and just, you know, are very barbaric in nature. And this is just a clear sign that these people are definitely the offspring of the Nephilim and the fallen angels. Okay, so now we have a foundation to build on as it pertains to the origin of evil. So what I want to do is go back to Enoch because I had read a great deal of verses in Enoch that I wasn't able to cover in which I want to explain what all this has to do with um, the fallen ones, Satan, um, you know, the offspring of the fallen ones, and just in general how the origin of evil um, correlates with what's going on in the earth today as it pertains to evil. So in First Enoch um, chapter 14, we were reading verse, I believe, 8 through 10 and talking about how um, the evil spirits came down or the watchers, I'm sorry, came down from heaven um, and came into the daughters of uh, humans on earth. And so we've talked about that enough. I want to go ahead and talk about now going forward what has happened um, in regards to these evil spirits who are still here on this earth. So while the King James Bible and other English Bibles um, pretty much foretell the event of the flood and a little bit about the giants, you know, Enoch goes into more depth and um, gives more details about what happened. So the death of the giants um, is brought about by the flood event um, that we all know about in Genesis. Well, what happened is the hybrid spirits of the physical giants survived the flood and are identified in First Enoch and other uh, Hebrew early texts as evil spirits. Um, we can draw this conclusion in Genesis 6 and 4 because it says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. And so after the flood, the um, spirits of the fallen angels uh, they still existed after the flood. Um, the evil spirits that would now pervade the earthly realm, uh, meaning, you know, they, they can't go back to heaven. They're here uh, persecuting humanity. And we can find this in Enoch um, chapter 14, you know, first Enoch 14 and 8 through 10, in which I read earlier on. Um, basically, it's uh, talking about how the giants who are produced from the heavenly spirits, the watchers, um, and flesh humans are called evil spirits on the earth now. And the earth will be their dwelling place. So the hybrid offspring from the watchers and the humans here on earth um, now have evil spirits proceeding from their bodies because they were born from humanity and from the holy watchers. So this was the beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits they will be called. That's what um, Enoch says. You see, we can't just say Satan is evil and that's it. You know, it ends right there. It's more complex than that. Um, I've shared Bible verses where Yahuwah says he creates evil. Well, he makes peace and creates evil. So, you know, it's more complex than just Satan is evil and that's it. So basically the spirits from this hybrid race that came from the fallen ones are still inhabiting this earth because Yahuwah said the earth will be their dwelling place. And what do they do here? It says um, in Enoch that the spirits of the giants oppress, afflict, destroy, attack, and do battle and work destruction on earth and cause a lot of trouble. When the hybrid race of people that came from the Watchers, the Giants, the Nephilim, and the Elioids walked the earth, they ate human flesh and they drank blood. So in Enoch it says the spirits of the Giants, they don't want food, they don't take food but they hunger and thirst and cause offenses. So they still hunger and thirst, but for what? So if they're not hungry for food, what are they hungry and thirsty for? Could it be blood and human flesh? And Enoch goes on to say that the spirits would be rising up against the children of men and against women because they have proceeded from them. So the spirits from the offspring of the watchers still roam the earth today 
and they look for bodies to inhabit. And if you look at the race of people that's most barbaric in nature, which many would say are the Europeans, um, we can see whose bodies these Nephilim spirits possess mostly. If you think about some of the things that they did to the Hebrews in slavery, um, I don't know if any other race of people have that type of um, evil in them that they can, you know, peel people's skin and make boots and belts out of skin and, you know, um, hang them and cut them open and eat them and, you know, all kinds of uh, evil acts. But Enoch says that these evil spirits are violent and they cause destruction and they attack humans. They cause illness among humanity. The Book of Jubilees refers to these unclean spirits as devils. We're going to take a look at Jubilees 10 verses 1 and 2 in which reads, And in the third week of this Jubilee, the unclean devils begin to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make err and destroy them. Verse 2, And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the devils, which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his son's sons. Let's go ahead and also read verse 3. And it reads, And he prayed before Yahuwah Elohiah and said, Elohim of the Ruach, or spirit, of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood and has not caused me to perish as you did the sons of perdition. For your grace has been great towards me, and great has been your mercy to my soul. Let your grace lift up upon my sons, and let not wicked ruach or spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. So as we can see here, Noah is praying for himself and his sons that Yahuwah does not allow these wicked spirits to destroy him and his sons. This is after the flood. So as we can see, these evil spirits had begun to afflict humanity. So let's go to Jubilees 7 and let me see, where are we going here? 7 and 27. Okay, and so it says, For I see and behold the devils have begun their seduction against you and against your children, and now I fear on your behalf that after my death ye will shed the blood of men upon the earth, and that ye too will be destroyed from the face of the earth. So again here in Jubilee 7 and 27, we see that these evil spirits are called devils. And again here we see the author talking about how these evil spirits begin to... Um, rise up against humanity with their seductions and against the children of Noah. So when Noah's children told him this, Noah began to pray and plead, asking that the spirits be arrested. He asked that they be shut up in the pit with their fathers, the fallen watchers. So Yahuwah agrees and tells the archangels to bind up the spirits of the giants. So now we're going to take a look in Jubilees 10, starting at verse 7, where Mastima pleads with Yahuwah that some of the spirits might be left with him to help him in his task to afflict and test humankind. Okay, so this is Jubilees chapter 10, starting at verse 7. It says, And Yahuwah Eloheinu bade us to bind all, and the chief of the spirits, Mastima, came and said, Yahuwah Creator, let some of them remain before me, and let them hearken or listen to my voice, and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment, for great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And verse 9 goes on to say, And he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. So mastema is a Hebrew word and is an angel who persecutes evil in the book of Jubilees. 
uh, he carries out punishment for Yahuwah, as well as tempting them and testing their faith. That's Mustima's job. So this puts us in the mind of Satan. And as it pertains to Mustima, he has a job to do for the Most High. So he's the one who is appointed to carry out punishment for the Most High, tempting humans and testing our faith. So now Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7 makes more sense. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. And so while we understand that the Most High is love, He's light, He's righteous, He's a just Elohim, and He loves His children, we know this, we also can see here that He said He creates darkness and He creates evil. And so if you take a look at the word create in this context or in this verse, you see that it is present tense. It is not created as in past tense. So the Most High is responsible for peace in our lives as well as the evilness that comes upon us. So it's a good idea to be on the Most High's good side because although we know He's love and He's light and He's righteous, He's a just Elohim, we also see here that He can send evil upon the wicked. So while we've been taught by Christianity or whatever other religion we've been in, um, that Satan is evil and Yahuwah is good and we can separate these two. We're finding out today that um, Yahuwah is responsible for everything. So essentially all roads lead back to the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it. I'll need to come back in the future because there is so, so much more to this topic Right now, I'm looking at so many verses that I wasn't able to mention because I don't like to make my videos too long because people become uninterested. They're busy. You know, you guys have things you're doing. I understand you can come back to the video, but my point is, is to try to uh, pique your interest and get you to thinking about um, what we haven't learned by the uh, Christian preachers and maybe get you to start um researching for yourself into these topics if you haven't already. So now maybe if you didn't know already, this brings clarity to you as to why this world is so corrupt and why the Most High is having to destroy this wicked kingdom. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, may Yahuwah bless you and keep you and your family safe in this dark time. And keep the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. And remember Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. Until my next video, Shalom.